Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, if I could choose, only one work by composer X. It would have to be work Kappa. Well, composer X is Charles Ives. Yes, we finally got to Charles Ives. And work Kappa, a lot of you have had recommendations, and they were good ones. Some of you suggested Three Places in New England, which I really, really love. And others suggested the Fourth Symphony, which is such a summation type of piece. And that is why I chose the Concord Sonata as work Kappa. Yes, it has to be the Concord Sonata. Why? Well, there are a lot of reasons why, and I'm going to go into them momentarily. But remember also that in this, in this particular exercise, the idea is to find the work that's most characteristic, not necessarily the greatest, the most distinctive, the most this or that or other. Um, and Ives' work, his mature work, is, is all pretty distinctive, let's face it. I mean, it's really cool. And I, I, I've talked about this before. I have a particularly strong feeling for Ives because he came from Danbury, Connecticut, where my father was was born, or my father was born in New Haven, but he grew up in Danbury. And my grandfather owned the auto parts store in Main Street in Danbury when Ives was there. And it, it's really kind of cool. And Ives went to my high school in New Haven, Hopkins Grammar, which in those days was a preparatory school for boys trying to get into Yale, which he subsequently went. So I was all over Ives. We used to have all these Ives festival things at Yale and at my high school. And it was, it was nice. It was nice because it, it put us in touch with a genuine original of a composer. And nobody told us that, you know, he was avant-garde or difficult or anything. He was just an alumnus. <laughs> and so he was like an alumnus who was a crazy composer guy. So that was really cool. Um, and and I, I really, I adore Ives' music. I think he was just a genius and, and, and a true original. Absolutely. And the Concord Sonata. Now, why did we pick the Concord Sonata? Okay. Here's the deal. I mean, it could just as easily have been the first sonata, which nobody listens to, which is absolutely as radical, even more radical in some ways than the Concord Sonata, and just as big and grand. But anyway, the Concord Sonata, because it does contain all of the elements that make Ives Ives. And those elements are not orchestral necessarily. They aren't. It's it's the harmonic audacity, the combination of of crazy folk songs and all that stuff jumbled up in insane counterpoint. Um, the element of virtuosity, which we shouldn't forget. I mean, Ives was a virtuoso something or other. I mean, he played the piano, of course, but, you know, he really, he was an organist. But, you know, his music is extraordinarily difficult. And that sense of virtuosity, I think, comes through better in a solo piano work than in an orchestral piece, where what you hear is kind of a jumble. And while it may be terribly difficult to play, it's sort of jumble. But on a piano, you're like, really difficult to play jumble. And I want that feeling of difficulty. Then there's also the, the, the sweet lyricism of the Alcotts, you know, that the, the obsession with the opening of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony and the transcendental element, which of course comes through in the finale and which is very similar to the finale of the Fourth Symphony, just as the second movement is quite similar to the the second movement of the Fourth Symphony. So all of the elements that make Ives Ives are in the Concord Sonata, but they're in sonata form. And the, the, the last reason that I believe the Concord Sonata ought to be the typical work that we give to the evil god Cancrazans as the one work that must be preserved if he destroys everything else by Ives or anyone else is because it's because I think that Ives' music exists outside, in a sense, of any particular medium. If he's restricted just to orchestral music, to orchestral stuff, it's not really, it's not really fair. It's not really him. He's like Bach in that sense. He could express himself in, in, any, in any medium whatsoever. And I think that flexibility, that individuality, that, that native, naive, this is me kind of feeling, um, is most pronounced in the Concord Sonata in a piece for solo piano, where where he's transforming a medium, which is much harder to do something really crazy and original in than with an orchestra, where you've got all these players, you could do all kinds of stuff with them and you know stretch them out however you want. So I think the Concord Sonata is the way to go, and and I stand by that choice. 
it's just a brilliant work and a difficult work, more difficult than I think, you know, the symphonies and the orchestral pieces because it's inherently less colorful, but it is absolutely extraordinary, perhaps for just that reason, all the more so. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.